build it back up, so there's very little amount of time setting up for that project. So if you're setting up and it's taking that time, you're not really being paid for that. You're paid for the cleaning time. So these were, this system was developed by Hydrotech. It has a, a sediment carbon filter, and then a, a cation and a, D, and a, and a um, anion filter um, set in here of the, of the two types of uh, DI resin. Um, an RO membrane in the back, and uh, two 12 volt batteries for longevity of uh, running the system. Uh, it's actually two 6 volts to make a 12. Um, a booster pump and a delivery pump to deliver the water from the tank. So um, the system is designed to be able to support not only window cleaning, but cleaning other shiny surfaces. It has a, a valve on the front for selecting whether or not you want RO water only, okay, or you want to use DI water out of the system. So RO water is great for uh, solar panels, uh, cleaning the shiny surfaces of buildings, granite. A lot of times uh, people are cleaning floors and they're having a squeegee or they have to go behind and scrub on the floor because the hard water is spotting on the floor. If you clean it and rinse it with RO water, it'll dry spot free. So, uh, so RO water is used for a lot more surfaces than just, uh, than just glass. Um, so standard, it comes just with the system down below and then they have options for an input reel and an output reel. So up to 125 feet of input garden hose type style, and then up to 300 feet of uh, 3 8 output reel. Uh, this fits in the back of the Ford Transit. We actually have it in a Ford Transit in our Jersey facility that we run around the show. Then uh, RHG made one um, a little bit different. That instance, they have their filters on the on the front here. Their RO boost pump and delivery pump and a 50 gallon tank, and only an output reel. So uh, uh, two different manufacturers now to pick from that didn't didn't exist last year to uh, be able to run tank delivery systems and make yourself more efficient on those jobs. Craig couldn't be here today for F9. Um, F9 is the uh, battery acid uh, stain stain remover for picking both uh, rust from. A regular iron source, it could be an HVAC runoff or fertilizer overspray or just rust dripping from a faucet. Uh, ornamental iron furniture that uh, is uh, been left left on the concrete and you leave the footprints of the, uh, of the ornamental furniture on, on the surface, uh, as well as golf cart or automobile uh, battery red, red brown rust stains. Um, the, uh, uh, the product is applied uh, either with a trigger sprayer out of the sample, uh, a pump-up sprayer, or an electric spray system. Um, you, you generally are going to look to put it out in squares. So uh, if you just put this on a stain and um, let it do its work, you'll get a little bright spot around where the stain was. So you really want to apply it in an in a, in a eye-deceiving uh, manner where you kind of follow the, the lines of the concrete that you're working with from that perspective. Um, generally, when I, I'm doing it, I'm spraying this from a pump-up sprayer, and uh, I just did a driveway size piece last week that had a bunch of mottled spots on it. And you, and you work your way back and forth with the sprayer, and then I just slow down where the orange rust was, just perceptively so, to put a little more product where the rust is, and then and then smooth up. And you get a nice, whitened, brightened concrete area without the rust on there. Um, and it's magical. Customers very rarely have another opportunity to remove rust from their from their surface, so it's uh, very little competition. And uh, you can watch the, the videos on our website or on F9. So. Schedule the text things to do. Okay, we got uh, Hydrotech here today. Where did Greg go? He was just like, there he is. He's in the back. Okay. <laughs> Hydrotech not only makes uh, we're talking about pressure washers. Hydrotech not only makes the uh, uh, this system for us for uh, for doing curb water cleaning, but they have uh, a, a, a numerous different makes and models of pressure washing equipment, and we have two pages in the catalog and more to come. So, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Hydrotech? Yeah, we, uh, we, we're based out of Redlands, California, at the Sefton Runaways. We've been in business for about 28 years. Uh, we build hot water machines, cold water machines. Uh, we do anywhere from 1,000 PSI to 5,100 PSI. 
in anywhere from about two and a half gallons a minute up to almost nine gallons a minute. So if, if you guys are looking, you know, for commercial grade car washing equipment, uh, we've we've got it, we've built it. Uh, we're fairly high tech company. We uh, rely highly on CNC machinery like CNC lasers. Uh, we've got uh, five batches of CNC press plates. Uh, we love stainless steel. What we find, we're in Southern California, so we don't want to paint anything. Steve, you guys don't paint anything, do you? <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> are always painting things. <laughs> so we're we're scared to death. We don't want to paint. So uh, we rely on an outside source for paint. So what we found uh, is is that we can a lot of times build product in stainless steel for the same cost as, as steel, and then paint to ship it somewhere, get it painted, and, and bring it back. So you'll see a lot of our, our products in an awful lot of stainless steel. Sometimes even the, the complete chassis. Uh, in, in addition to pressure washers, uh, we've gotten really heavy into wastewater recovery and recycling products, and uh, that, that's been really good for us, especially here in California. And it's it, it, we see that really starting to migrate all around the country as well. The uh, EPA air, water quality laws are all in effect for all the states. It's yes. just a matter of what's being enforced out there. California has a much strong, stronger enforcement, especially around the beach cities of it. So it's, we're just aware of it ahead of things like a lot of things in California. So um, they have a full range from uh, from cold, cold water systems through hot water. He's got a small hot water system out there today with the pressure recovery and reels. With that, we just have a sample in as a startup in our really clean catalog and full catalog to follow. So today he's got a hot water uh, pressure washer out there that's going to be driving a surface cleaner that's doing recovery into a recovery pump, and then we're going to pump that water off to a uh, appropriate place for it to be. Um, disposed of. You don't want to uh, dump it into the regular um, gutter uh, because that's not any requirement. So you're talking about a, a sanitary a sanitary sewer or on property in a garden bed, something like that, where it, uh, it's not going to run off property. And we'll be showing that, showing that out there. So um, you'll see on, on page 104, a lot of these systems, um, skin mount can be mounted on trailers that they make. So you can get a, everything from a, a simple cold water pressure washer all the way up to a skid mounted trailer with everything on it that you need. Any questions? Thank you. And coming up next is AC Locker. AC! We're using the. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh man, I was going to lean on that. It's not a single phone call all day, of course, as I'm walking up the phone rings. You didn't bring the hat this time. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> there, there's actually a good, there's a good story that goes with why I'm not wearing the hat as much as I once did. And um, so after about the third time of me walking through the airport and somebody going, you know, going, yee, like that. <laughs> And I'm like, what's this? They're like, call the wild man, call the wild man. I'm like, I looked up who this call the wild man dude is, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so you have these gator boys, these call the wild mans, and there's all these turtle men. Turtle man, all these people. And they're all wearing these hats with crop teeth on them now. And now I'm like, oh, man. So I look like some whacked out weird old, you know, weirdo or something, you know, now. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. So I decided I don't want to be the hee 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 guy, you know. Let me go ahead and pull up my slide presentation here. I'm going to go grab my clicker. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> So I got to figure out something else. It was funny, is after a little while people were standing without the hat on, I had a guy walk up to me and go, <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> they won't know who it is wrong. Different bald spot. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Thank you, Ken. So, um, awesome. oh, wow. Thank you. Let me find another USB port. Another USB port. So, um, I had a guy come up to me and go, AC? And I'm like, yeah? He's like, you have hair. And I'm like, yeah, I have hair. He said, I thought you always wore that hat because you were bald. I'm like, yeah. I've got hair. So, um, what, what a lot of y'all uh, may know or may not know about me is I'm actually, um, I did soft washing for 20 years. I started back in 1992 uh, when I summarily got kicked out of Abilene Christian University. It's really hard to get kicked out of a Christian university because pretty much if the check don't bounce, you can keep going. Um, but my it wasn't something glorious like they caught me playing in a rock and roll band at a bar, drinking whiskey or anything like that. Is my grades sucked. <laughs> so they looked at me and said, Boy, stop spending your daddy's money. And I went back to Florida and wanted to start a business. So I started my soft washing business. Um, the, you know, about the time I started uh, you know, going back to Florida, the family house was getting painted, and the family painter pressure washed the house to prep it. And my dad didn't like the streaks up on the roof, so we got there the pressure washer and pressure washed the roof. And my dad called me up on the phone and said, man, it looked like brand new after you pressure wash it. Seems like that would be a great business for you to get into. And I went, mm, okay. So I took my background in horticulture, which is the only job I've ever had um, other than soft washing was I worked in the nursery industry for seven years. I'm a plant person. I like to grow plants. Skill that might come in handy if I ever moved to Colorado. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Or California. <laughs> or, or California, yes. But um, yeah, the hypophonics thing, I'm actually a hypophonics expert. I know a lot about hypophonics, and that's how they're growing all that junk now. But that's the only job I ever had. For a short time in college, I did do janitorial work, and uh, you know, I, I'm, like this floor here is driving me crazy. I, I did these types of floors and made them so pretty you could see your image across them. But, um, so I went to Florida and I took all that background I had in horticulture and spraying and using agricultural sprayers and stuff for spraying plants to kill bacteria and fungus and stuff like that. Um, did this as a business for about 20 years and in uh, 2005 I got diagnosed with diabetes. I was having a lot of problems every day. I would take naps at 3 o'clock. I'd wake up in the morning, couldn't move my legs or my arms. Um, was, you know, sit down to, to, to eat dinner, would go through an entire two liter bottle of Coke at dinner because um, I was so thirsty and I just had a lot of problems and went to the doctor and he said, well, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, okay, what's the good news? He said, we know exactly what's wrong with you. I said, okay, what's the bad news? He said, you're a screaming diabetic. And I was like, ooh, okay, that hurts because I was Superman. You know, nothing was ever going to, you know, stop me. And it stopped me dead in my tracks. Um, one of the things that really screws with diabetics is stress. I can eat good, I can pay attention to my diet, I can go out and exercise. If I get stressed out, my blood sugar just goes right through the roof. So I don't do stress anymore. So in order to keep <clears throat> up with my desire to no longer do stress anymore, I got out of the cleaning business. Because at our height, I had about 100 employees. How many of y'all have ever had 100 employees? It sucks. It like double dutch sucks. And uh, it's just hard to keep up with. Not that employees are so bad. I loved everybody. And I love giving the opportunity to people to be able to provide for their families and all. It's just you got that many employees, you're going to have that many issues, that many problems, that much drama, and all the stuff that goes along with all those people that you love. And uh, so I had to get out of the business and uh, had a little bit of family issues and, and stuff because uh, it was a family business, and I said, you know, just not worth it. So I started this, which is my business consulting company. And believe it or not, this is what I primarily do. Um, any of y'all that watched me on Facebook, screaming all over the country, um, I'm not usually running around selling these products, although I do go to these open houses and stuff and talk about soft watch systems. I run around the country, and I help companies grow. Uh, I've got a really great record that I'm really, really excited and proud of. Um, 
you know, if, if bragging can be healthy, it's about the healthiest I get. But every single company I've touched in the last three years, except for three companies, okay, of which one of those three companies, the owner died, so they don't count. Um, every other company, I have at least tripled within 18 months. So um, I've got several that had a six to eight factor growth. So um, that's where I really have a lot of fun, and that kind of feeds my energy and my juices and my creativity. Um, some of y'all saw the uh, Bayside soft wash truck that was here earlier. Uh, I designed that whole thing and my team and the artists that we work with, and we put that whole rebrand together for him and do a lot of that kind of stuff, and it's fun. Um, so here I am. I'm going along doing this whole consulting thing, and it was uh, probably about October of 2010. Uh, another pressure washing supply house uh, wanted me to design a curriculum for them, very similar to what we have that we have available now, which is our certified applicator program. And they, their, their business model was, you know, AAC, design this curriculum for us because we're going to train these people, we're going to certify them, we're going to do it out of our equipment and our chemicals so that they've been certified everything out of our equipment and chemicals and now they're going to buy our stuff because they're certified using it. I said, great, what stuff do you use? They went, well, I haven't quite gotten there yet. <laughs> wonder if you could help us with that. And I went, well, I did it for 20 years. I'll license to you all of my technology and, and everything. So I entered into a license agreement with them. It didn't work out. We did launch the product line. They were going through a lot of inner business struggles and stuff then, and, and we decided to uh, end that relationship. And I got soft wash systems back in my lap. Uh, it was August of 2011. And then I started traveling around the country doing what I do and talking about the products and teaching people and loving on people and the thing just went right through stress. So I raised your hand. Got a question? Yeah. You, uh, was it a distributor company or a window cleaning company? The one you said you locked? It was a distributor. It was, they were called Deluxe at one time. Now they're called Powerwash.com. Um, good, good company. What, are they like a retailer? Just like here? Yeah, they're, they're in Dallas, Fort Worth. And, but they're more on the power washing side of the uh, industry, okay. not in the, in the window cleaning side. And, um, you know, it's just, it wasn't a match, and they were having struggles, so we decided to part ways. We're still very, very good friends with them. And, uh, but uh, got the product line back in my lap and, and started kind of marketing it and doing it the way I'd like to do it, which, how many how many of y'all voted this last time around? Y'all vote on a regular basis. Anybody here vote on a regular basis? Okay. Y'all know the differences between a Republican and a Democrat? <laughs> sure. Does anybody know really what the difference is? No. Blue color and white color? Yeah. And can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth? <laughs> okay, here's the difference between a Republican and Democrat, because there's really not that big of a difference. Okay, basically, the big difference between a Republican and a Democrat is Democrats like to tax you on the front side. They want to get as much money out of you as they possibly can on the front side out of your paycheck as quick as they can. <clears throat> Raise the taxes, they like to buy votes. You know, we're not going to tax you because we want your votes. We're going to we're going to tax the snot out of you because we know we're not we're never going to get your vote anyhow, but we're going to get your money. Okay? Republicans still want your money. I mean, come on, let's not be disingenuous here. I mean, I mean you, you got to pay the light bill somehow if they're in Washington. So they will still want your money, but Republicans believe if we go out and we love up on you and we teach you how to run your business and we take off the constraints on the front side, then you'll make more money and then we'll just get it on the back side from you. Truth. It's just the truth. So it's really most of the difference between the two political parties we have in our country aren't really big hardcore differences. It's just how they get to the same answer to the same problem. And if we all started thinking that way, well, we both want the same answer, the same problem, and we both want good for the country, but you want to go around this way, we want to go around this way, and we fight about how we're getting there, but we're not taking care of the solution, and that's what our two political you know, parties do in this country. Um, when I look at selling a product, and some of y'all have been in my stuff before, and I talk about, I don't want you to buy my crap. I really don't. Don't buy my crap. You can go to people's garages, and you can roll up the garage, and you can see the piece of equipment that was from the last, God bless his soul, from the last National Cleaning Expo, 
or the last PWNA convention, or the last UAMCC convention, that was the big, green, mean, cool, latest piece of equipment you had to have to grow your business. And you're still doing that same $150,000 a year in production, but you're doing it with six pieces of equipment. Okay, and that's, that hurts you. So what I like to do, because this is my primary business right here, is I like to come in and teach you guys how to have a great business. Then, after you've grown your business and you're making lots of money, you'll have plenty of money to buy all the crap. I still want you to buy the crap, okay? But I want you to be able to afford to buy my crap. I'm not going to give you a slick sales pitch to get you to walk out of here with a bunch of my crap on the short term. You know, I can show you pictures of warehouses of people that use my stuff where they got where they have taken entire walls and just stacked up five gallon things of greenwash and built like pyramids up the wall just for kicks and giggles. You know? And you're like, boy, you used a lot of greenwash last year. Like, yep. Yeah. But they made a lot of money. And that's the way it should be, right? Would y'all agree? Yeah. 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 I mean, how many of y'all gross dollars in your company do more than $100,000 a year? Raise your hands. Okay? Keep your hand up. Keep your hands up. Everybody, okay? More than $100,000 a year. 150. 175. 200. Okay? Right now, Jim's the only guy with his hand up in this room. <laughs> Can you sell t shirts? You know why? Because Jim's a businessman. Jim could sell cold cut sandwiches and he'd still have a good business. So we've got to teach you guys how to be businessmen, how to grow your business, how to take care of your families, how to, how to put money in the bank, how to have the hope of retirement one day and not have to be suckled up to the breast of our United States government to get a check every month to live on. Right? Right. right. Okay. So if you guys would like to do that through soft washing. I'll talk about soft washing. <coughs> okay. okay. So what soft wash systems is? Soft wash systems is the world's largest soft wash cleaning network. We have a network of professionals around the country, and soft wash systems, the company, sells the equipment, chemicals, education, and support for you to go into the soft washing business. We have different applicators and stuff around the country. We have certified applicators and authorized companies and five-star companies. We have a path set up for you, but the path is set up to grow your business. I talked to a million-dollar window cleaning company this morning. Called me on the phone. Million-dollar window cleaning company. There's only a few of those in the country. So if you started naming names, you would probably hit this company. They are 100% converting over to a soft wash company because window cleaning has become an ancillary service in their company. Okay? Yes? Hi, Jess, but what does that mean? <laughs> okay, an ancillary service is like um, if you go to the car wash and get your car washed. Yeah. You've ever heard the phrase, keep the main thing the main thing? Uh -huh. Okay? The main thing is the car wash. The ancillary service would be the armor on the tires, and the steam cleaning the carpets, and the you know the, the diamond bright on the on the um, what do you call it, on the headlamp covers to clean the headlamp covers. Those are all your ancillary or your extra services, or what they call them up charges. Sometimes you upsell. Make, sometimes you make more money on those. Okay. Sometimes you do. Okay. But you only make more money on those if your car wash is already like a hundred bucks. You know, then you don't feel bad about paying twenty five dollars to have somebody buff out your headlamp covers. Okay. Well, this company was tired of making $250 a house to clean windows, and we're a lot more excited about the $1,200 a house they're getting for roof cleaning. Oh, by the way, because they were cleaning the roof for $1,200, they were now getting $400 a house to clean the windows. How did that happen? Because How did if you're already paying $1,200 for a roof cleaning, a $400 window cleaning seems cheap. Very good. Hmm. But if you're only coming out there to do the window cleaning, the customer's going to beat you down on your $400 window cleaning. What's it going to end up being? A $250 window cleaning. So this million-dollar window cleaning company, which it takes a lot to get to be a million-dollar window cleaning, is converting 100% to a roof soft washing company 
and they sell everything else as an ancillary service or an add-on to that roof cleaning. And that's a particular technique that I teach called the top sell principle. So what we're talking about today is the end is coming. Are you ready? <laughs> you all get the punchline to the joke here pretty quick. Okay. <clears throat> the Earth's mass basically never changes. Asteroids may enter and satellites may leave the Earth, but what we have here is what we have here. There's not some asteroid screaming at the Earth that has 45 billion gallons of water on it. When it hits the Earth, it's going to replenish all of our water, right? Okay, so except for a, a little asteroid falling to Earth or a satellite going up into orbit, the Earth weighs what the Earth weighs. What we have is what we have. The mass of the Earth is what we have. What we have here to consume is what we have to consume. Now, I'm going to sound like a Democrat here real quick, but trust me, I'm just a tree-hugging Republican. Okay, but I am a tree-hugger. It didn't set out to be that way. It's just after a while you start thinking, you know something? I want to leave this Earth a little better than what I found it. So I better start doing something about that. Okay? When you look at the world's population, from 380, that's 300 years after Christ died, to 1680, the world's population basically stayed static, stayed the same, peaking at about 550 million people. In 1700, which was about the time of what? What happened about... The 18, well, not 17. No, what happened about the 1700s? Does anybody know what happened then? What was the big thing that happened on the Earth that made everything start moving forward at light speed? Inventions being invented, things happening, all kinds of growth start happening. It was called the Industrial Revolution. Okay, we were able to start building machines and producing products and, and our standard of life started to get better. People started living longer. So, so about 1700, that started happening. So when you look at the chart here, you know, we go from about 100 million people to in 1650, we were 545. 545 million, 50 years earlier, 545 million, 50 years earlier, 480, 50 years early, 4. 425. We basically stayed the same. We didn't grow very much. Then in 1700 AD, we went to 1610. Next 15, 50 years, 720. Next 50 years, 900. Next 50 years, 1.2 billion. Next 50 years, actually next 25 years, 1.3. Next 25 years, 1.6. Next 25 years, 2 billion. Next 25 years, 2.5. To the point where we got 1999, we had 6 billion people on this earth. 6 billion people in 1999. In 10 years, we grew over a billion people. First time ever in the history of the planet. 1 billion people in 10 years. Okay, so we're growing pretty rapidly. The UN actually projects a decline in our population starting about 2040. So how many of y'all seen when there's a hurricane on the East Coast? They'll put up all the different models of where they think the hurricane is going to go, and they'll have all these different paths up on the screen, and you know they'll say, well, this model says it's going here, and this model says it's going here. Well, this is the world, the UN's world population models here, and it shows. All the current data up until right now, at about 7.5 billion people, and then one model continues to show us growing. One model shows us to start to moderate, and then this right here is the zombie apocalypse. How many of y'all heard of the zombie apocalypse? How many of y'all excited about that? <laughs> Keep watching The Walking Dead. You know, well, the zombie apocalypse happened. I'm not into that, you know? But that's. The Earth will self-correct. The Earth always self-corrects. Okay, we got all upset about the hole in the ozone back in the 90s, and all of a sudden they looked up there with their instruments and their radar and everything else, and guess what happened to the hole in the ozone? It closed. Holy crap! The hole in the ozone closed! And 
then they realized, does it do that? <laughs> and then somebody in the room went, <clears throat> and they said, yeah, you. He said, um, maybe the whole the ozone happened because it was always there, and we just now developed the technology to see it. Oh, that makes sense. We had all that hole in the ozone freaking out everything back in the 90s, and the hole in the ozone's always been there. Because it closed up. And then a couple months later, what did it do? Open back up again. You know why? How many of y'all pulled the plug on your bathtub? What does the water do? Have you ever seen it when it closes up and it stops doing it, and it reopens and the, the, the venturi starts going again? It closes up, stops doing it, reopens, and the venturi starts again? Where's the hole in the ozone? It's down on the plug of the earth, down in the bottom. And the, they're in the middle of Antarctica. It's because the Earth is doing what? It's spinning. So it's going to open, it's going to close, and everything else. Okay? The Earth self-corrects. The Earth produces ozone. When you have a thunderstorm and there's lightning, and you smell that ozone in the air. It didn't come from the cars going down the 405 freeway. You know? Everybody gets on ble bleach, 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 oh, sodium hypochlorite is going to kill us, all, 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 and everything else. The biggest naturally occurring pool of sodium hypochlorite is Lake Lucero in White Sands, New Mexico. It's the reason why the sands are white, by the way. And if we were all dead and wasn't a single human being on the face of the earth, guess what? Lake Lucero would still be there. And it produces more chlorine bleach than any other source on the face of the earth. Okay? But the earth self-corrects. So this... That's a possibility, that's a possibility, and God, that's a possibility. By the way, that right there is 2040. So if any of y'all are looking for the date of the, of the uh, zombie apocalypse, it's in about 16 years. Okay? Actually, 26 years. 26 years. Yeah, 26 years. I was never good at that. Okay? So how much water is there on the earth? 326 million trillion gallons, basically a bunch. It's a bunch of water. Okay. How many people are on this earth? Well, 7.122 billion people. Does anybody know what that is right there? No, it's not dirt. Those are cremation ashes. When it all comes down to it, it's all said and done. We are all 4.5 pounds of inexpensive chemicals you can buy at any chemical supply. You know how you get people like, I don't want you using any chemicals on my own. Okay, then I'm not going to send any laborers to your home because all my guys are 4.5 pounds of chemicals and the rest of them is what? <laughs> water. The rest of us is water. Okay, so how much do you weigh? Two thirty. Two thirty. No, she said two thirty. So if you're two hundred and thirty pounds, and you're four and a half pounds of chemicals, how much of you is water? Two hundred and twenty-five pounds of water. How many gallons is that? At eight pounds a gallon. How many gallons is that? Anybody got a calculator on? Two twenty-five divided by eight is what? About 27 gallons of water. Multiply that by 7.12 billion people on the earth. Okay? Where's all the water going, guys? So if the fresh water, the droughts, not enough water in the aquifer, we're running out of water, all this stuff's happening, where's all the water going? How many of y'all have watched the movie The Matrix? Okay. I am a firm believer that there are two sources where you can get all of life's answers, all of life's questions answered. First source is the Bible. The second source is the movie The Matrix. <laughs> okay. But basically, Morpheus was right. Okay. I'm gonna actually see if I can go ahead and, and click this. I think we're hooked up to the internet here. Cannot locate the internet proxy server. Oh, I'm gonna let it spin here. It's probably gonna give you a hard time. How many of y'all remember that scene or seen the movie The Matrix? Remember that scene 
where Neos and there was this head and he's like, oh, Christ. And he's like, oh, my God. I just can't get out of this evil page. And all these demons have come to me. Ah. You know? And Morpheus is telling him, well, the machines, they came and they attacked us. And, and, you know, they, they fought against the people and, and they, they wanted to eradicate us. And we figured out that they were using the sun to receive their power. So we blotted out the sun and darkened the skies and the machines started to die. And the machines had to figure out a place to get their source for power. And what did the machines do? They started collecting human beings and hooking them up and turning human beings into power. And then Morpheus at one point holds up a Duracell battery. Duracell must have paid a million dollars for this and turn us all into this. He holds up a battery. Okay? But the bottom line is, guys, I didn't pull this up ahead of time, but you guys will still get the analogy, is that if this is all of the fresh water that's on the earth, and we ain't making any more. This is all fresh water that's on the earth. Ain't no huge, gigantic ice asteroids screaming at the earth, waiting to hit our atmosphere and replenish us with water, right? If that's it, then every time a human being is born, they become these little batteries full of water. Right? So basically, we're all batteries. That's the Earth's population right now. This is largely why it's happening. This is India right here. I mean, somebody put something in the water and keep them from reproducing quick. I mean, look at that. Look at Scandinavia. Look at the density here in Japan. Okay? Look at the United States, how sparsely populated we are compared to the rest of the world. I thought we were the bad guys! Aren't we? We're the polluters. We're the ones screwing everything up. We're the bad guys. We go to all these UN things. We're like, you bad Americans, give us money. We'll make you feel better. Okay? That's what they that's what they say. But we're not the bad guys. We're not overpopulating the world like everybody else. So the end is coming. You've got to decide whether you're going to pick, like in the movie The Matrix, whether you want to pick the red pill or the blue pill. Okay? Whether you want to pick the red pill or the blue pill. Whether you want to pick pressure washing or you want to pick soft washing. All right, so you guys are like, well, what's the difference? Well, here's the difference. That machine that's sitting out there and reach higher ground now produces a smaller entry level machine for us. That machine out there uses one third the water of pressure washing. It lasts four to six times longer on the clean. All the chemicals are biodegradable. They ship non-hazardous. They're all water based. They're all low VOC. That system is 12 volt power and has a charging system on it that charges those 12 volt batteries from the power that your vehicle creates anyhow driving down the road. Soft washing is now becoming the standard of what is going to replace pressure washing. Because what I just told you guys here, do you not think that there's not some government agency out there right now rolling these same thoughts around in their head? I can tell you it's already happened in Florida. In Florida, when we go into stage three water restrictions because of the drought, it's a third degree felony to pressure wash a building. So you get caught pressure washing a building, it's going to affect your job, your ability to get a job. You can never become a soccer coach. You can never become a den mother or a den father for Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts. You can't do any of that stuff because now you're a felon because you pressure wash something. But in Florida, we have a written exemption from the state that says, oh, when we go into stage three water restrictions, yeah, we realize you guys are pressure washers. You're soft washers. You, got, you guys can clean stuff. Okay? It's not going to take long. I'll get you in a second. It's not going to take long before the government decides that preservation of life 
and fresh water is more important than cleaning the outside of the building. Sorry about that, man. It sucks for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, 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 we. <laughs> but you can make stainless steel soft wash systems too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, go ahead. California's having a drought too, but my question is the soft wash is for the roof, right? We do roofs, exteriors, stucco, wood fences, wood decks, driveway, sidewalks, vinyl siding, windows. Anything you would clean exterior wise with a power washer, we can clean with a soft washing machine. How, how does that compare with like, the, the DI water and the water that flows? Well, we use a lot of RO and DI water to actually make our chemicals. Um, some of our more advanced pieces of equipment, we use the RO filters to fill a basin tank with RO water because it makes the chemicals energize and work a lot better when we mix that RO water with our chemicals. And then we can also water fed pole clean pure water windows. Our machines are all constructed. Our, our business model is to clean a house from the chimney cap to the curb. We want to clean everything on that house. Most of our guys are getting between $1,500 and $2,500 a day to go in and clean a house stem to stern. Yeah. And that piece of equipment that's out there on that trailer, um, we'll do between $7,500 and $10,000 a week in production. <laughs> a week, yeah. Can you see why window cleaning companies are becoming soft washing companies? Because you guys are running around all over the place running routes and everything else for four or yeah. five hundred bucks a day. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. yeah. That's why a lot of people in the industry don't like me because I'm gradually during the soft wash, that's why I call it the soft wash revolution. When you go online, you see hashtag soft wash revolution on our posts and stuff. It's because we're little by little taking over the cleaning world. Little by little. And it's not necessarily because power washing is evil or anything else. It's just nothing in power washing has changed in the last 50 years. The only innovation that's come to power washing in the last 50 years is the downstream injector, and somebody turned around and moved it to the front of the pressure washing one and called it next jet, and now it's the down or stream injector. That's the most impressive thing that's happened in the entire power washing industry in the last 50 years. Nothing's really changed. It's fossil fuel-based machines. They're loud. They're obnoxious. The, the next place the EPA is going to now, because they, they went to the auto industry and got rid of leaded gas, they've gone to all the other small engine industries, the marine industry and all, and convert everybody to four stroke. Where are they going now? They're going all to the, the landscaping and power washing and all that to convert all of that now into four stroke technology because they're trying to get rid of all the gas powered emissions. Um, all of our equipment, we're preparing for the future way ahead. We're eight to ten chest moves ahead because we're preparing for, you know, like I said, you know, one-third of the water pressure washing lasts four to six times longer, biodegradable chemicals, low VOC, water-based, um, you know, and, and completely electric systems, and that's what we're headed for. We are, we are outpacing everybody else to take over the industry, and that's what we're doing. Mostly just because it's fun, honestly. It's just fun, you know, not because I want to be the, the, the cleaning king of the world. Gosh, I'd rather hit the Bass Tour and go with the Bass Master Classic. I won the Redfish Tour National Championship back in 2006. I'd really like to go get the freshwater equivalent and win that. But right now, this is where God's got me, and we're having a whole lot of fun peeing on trees. Okay. okay, now what we do is if you guys are interested in getting into the soft washing industry, don't go out and buy a bunch of crap. Okay, I'm sure there are people here that would like you to buy a bunch of crap, but let's teach you how to run a business first. Whether you're a window cleaning company, a landscaping company, soft washing company, whatever, this is the place you need to stop. I mean, not stop, start. Start, stop. Yeah, stop here and then start or whatever. I need a diet coke. Right now. Uh, anyhow, okay. So what this is, this is our this is our certified applicator program. This is our 20 module certification program. It's 22 hours of classes. All the workbooks for those classes. The test, 200 question test you take at the end of those classes, and as well, it's got the hands on check card here. That then you go to one of our revolution camps or go to one of our pro staff members to get all of your 20 proficiencies done and checked off by a pro staff member on your hands on check because you can't learn it all on the web or watching a DVD. You got to go actually put the stuff in your hands eventually. Okay, so it's got the workbooks DVD, the modules DVD, and then it gives you a great 700 megabyte 
content DVD back here, which is all of your price lists and your collateral materials and your quote sheets and your price lists and your, you know, I killed a plant letter and I stepped on your dog letter and I need to collect money from you letter and it's got all the little pieces and parts and documents and things that you comment on. Go, hey AC, you got a, a thing for this you created in the last 22 years? Um, yeah, I do. It's on the desk. And they're not all perfect. They're rough drafts. You know, it's, it, it, they get you 80% there, and then you put your logo on it, you tweak the language a little bit, and you make it yours. But this right here is, is, is an $899, erases 18-month learning curve, and show special on this if you guys buy it today at the open house is $699. And it comes with your test, which the test is a $199 test. So it's really a... $1,100 value that you get for $699. So we know we've already sold one of these today. But this right here, I can tell you, even if you didn't get into soft washing, if you took everything I've got in here, it's got five modules just on market. If you took everything I had in here and just applied it to your window cleaning business, you would triple your window cleaning business in the next 18 months. This is what we do. So. If you guys are interested in this, you can get with Jenny or any of the other salespeople here, Jay Racenstein. Let them know that you want this. They'll go ahead and uh, take your order today. We drop ship it right to you. You'll probably have it within four or five days. Okay? Other questions about soft washing. We already established you can clean a lot of stuff soft washing. Um, how many of you guys, let me ask you a question. Um, how many people in here are just strictly window cleaners? Okay, I'm going to say an evil, foul word. Screens. Hate screens? Pull them out, bending them, screwing with them. I used to tell the customers when we, they'd say, we want to get our windows going to be clean. Our windows would say, yeah, but you got to pull all your screens out yourself. Lay them out in the driveway, we'll wash them and all, but you got to put them back in yourself. Okay? When we soft wash windows, we soft wash them with the screen. Wow. And then we spray a soap on them. Soft washing. Soft washing, the chemical soft washing, you're soft washing. It's not like a pressure washer where you grab the pressure washing one and you have to stand this close to something. No. You just spray it up on the wall and it runs down the wall. Wherever you spray the chemicals, the chemicals are not selective. They are going to clean whatever they get on. Period. Because the chemicals do all the work. Soft washing is always, there, there's a definition on here. So soft washing is where you're using an agricultural style sprayer to deliver the chemicals and the applicator has nothing to do with the cleaning process. The chemicals themselves do all the cleaning. That's soft washing. So when we spray a window, it's getting the sill, it's getting the gaskets, it's getting the sash, it's getting the screens, it's getting everything. Then we rinse it with water, and then we spray our soap on there that we like to use, which is called bleach wash. Now, I'm not going to get into the hydrophilic, hydrophobic argument. Okay? I don't even understand that stuff. All my customers understand when they look out the window, they go, well, it's clean. Okay? So, when we clean a window, we put the bleach wash on it, our bleach wash finishing soap, is a finishing soap that neutralizes bleach and buffers surfaces against the damaging effects of bleach. And it has a really great cheater wax in it. So then when you come back and after you spray the, the uh, soap on there, you take a little scrub brush and you scrub brush everything off real nice. And you rinse it with RO water. And it just feeds up and runs off and dries 98% spot free. If we really, 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 really want to get it perfect, we just take out our electric blower, plug it into our battery pack, we've got an inverter on our systems, and we walk over to the window with a little hose attached to our blower, so we hold our, did y'all see that very cool squirt bottle earlier that the younger guy had, where it's on here, and no matter which direction you squirted, that's what we do with our blowers. You have the blower, we have a hose, we have a wand on it. We just take the blower and we just blow dry the window. Now, one of the things we have to do, do we have one of these pads over here? 
and we don't really, but this this will work. One one of the things that we have to do, yeah, this will work good. When you get done cleaning the house, because we've used water and we've cleaned more than just the window. You know, you go you watch somebody do a window, they hit it with the mop and they squeegee it off, and they take a towel or a band on it, and they do this here. Yeah, they're done. I get the whole freaking wall wet. So I'm going to come back 15 minutes later. What's going to be on that window? So I just take a pad like this, a little squirt ball, with a little water and rubbing alcohol, and I go, and what's gone? The street. That's all we do to clean windows. And we get $400 to do it. Not that I want to piss off a bunch of window cleaners, but we're killing it in the window cleaning business. We're killing it. We're putting pure water packs on most every piece of equipment we put out now. And we estimate the next two years will be the largest window cleaning company in the country. So we've already got 35, 35 certified applicators out there right now, about 100. 35 authorized companies, about 100 certified applicators. And they're all starting to do windows. So, other questions? What about the, uh, the cost of the chemicals? Okay, so if you follow our entire system, you're going to use green wash, and you're going to mix that in with your bleach and water solution, and you're going to spray, let's say, a roof. Usually a gallon of chemical covers about 100 square feet in a worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, 200 square feet. But if you use the green wash, you use the bleach wash, you use our plant wash, which we don't have a sit in here, but it's right around the corner here, to neutralize the plants and all. Okay, because the stuff we use is strong, you can get on the plants and burn the plants, or it can kill the aerobic bacteria in the soil around the plants. Spray the plant wash on them. You follow our whole system stem to stern. Depending on what your cost is for bleach, you'll run about a buck fifty to two gal I mean two dollars per gallon of finished chemical to do the whole process. So if you look at a house and you say, Okay, I clean the roof, the exterior, the driveway, the pool deck, the wood fence, everything on the house, and I used 150 gallons of chemical the whole time I was cleaning, you had about roughly $150 of chemical cost on that whole house that you just cleaned for $1,800. So the chemical cost is minimum. Um, the biggest cost in this business is labor. Uh, but our green wash sells for $130 a five-gallon container. That'll do between five and eight roofs. Um, it'll do, on houses, it'll do about 20 exteriors, like doing stucco or vinyl siding and stuff like that. Um, bleach wash is what we use to clean everything out at the end of the day. It's what we use to do the windows. It's what we use on vinyl siding because it's got a very heavy cheater wax on it. It really makes stuff gloss up and glow. You'll never wash your car with anything else again but bleach wash. You'll put a cap of it in your windshield wiper fluid. I mean, it's like Avon skin so soft, if you all remember that stuff. It's like a million and one uses, you know. So are you saying that the, that the typical transaction is the roof, entire house, like the power log, plus that's, the windows? That's what we try to do. We try to do package deals. Uh, we, our guys, when we discover other products like F9 or Diamond Magic or the Stone Company, or run into a lot of marble and stuff like that. Now, when we run into that kind of stuff, um, we probably pull in those products too, because our goal is to clean a house from the roof all the way down the curb. You need me to wrap up? No, no, I'm just standing here. Oh, okay. But yeah, we, our goal is to not just get the roof. So, in doing a house, then, your, your uh, work team would be. Three people. Two people. Two people. Three people if you're training that third person to go on another truck. Um, but no, 30 people, you start to violate the 50 cents on the dollar rule for service businesses. You should never exceed 50 cents on the dollar or 50% overhead um, on payroll in a company. That includes your sales, your office support, your technicians, everybody that's, that's on your payroll in your company in a service business, window cleaning, pressure washing, landscaping. Anything that's a service business never exceeds 50 cents in the dollar because you're directly eating into your profit if you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it's two people on a truck is the sweet spot. You want that third person, you don't really get enough more work done to justify the extra expense and labor. Typical house taking to the Um Okay, everybody knows the 2,500 square foot ranch home. 
California rancher, everybody knows that house. Not our target customer, don't no clean. But everybody knows that house. That house, pull up, set up, clean it, wrap up, flick, check, pull out the driveway two hours west on the roof. If you're doing the roof exterior, sidewalk, everything about three to three and a half hours. That house, if we did the roof and everything would be a seven fifty to a thousand dollar house, and we could do three of those a day if we wanted to. Um, we don't we don't generally do those. Um, so what is your target house? McMansions. Where all of our all of our guys that are authorized go through the uh, ask the seal program. This is a third party company that comes and invests our companies. They do all the criminal background checks, check your licensing, your insurance, make sure you're on the up and up, and then they seal your company. Now some people go, oh, well, I've got a criminal background. I screwed up 15 years ago. <laughs> We're not worried about that, okay? Uh, ask the seal, just make sure they're not putting predators at people's homes. They're a second chances company. Everybody screwed up. They confidentially look at each criminal record, and if they make a, a justification or a judgment on that, and they go, nah, we're not worried about putting this guy at a home because his crimes weren't predatory crimes or weren't crimes that would that were in fear of putting a homeowner. You know, like if you're an accountant and you embezzled money, we're probably not worried about you pruning somebody's hedges. You know, they make those determinations. If you're a sexual offender or you've got arrest for a home invasion or robbery, we're probably not going to clear you. Um, but all of our guys go through Ask the Seal, and all of our homeowners are people that have something to lose. Uh, when we go after customers, our target customer is somebody that has something to lose, somebody that is not going to shortcut on professionalism or licensing or insurance, God bless you, or anything like that. God bless you. They're specifically looking for somebody that they can trust to clean their entire home. And, and they're, they're not going to get sued when they stub their toe and go, whoa, was that a $100,000 Mercedes in the driveway? Oops. You know, they're looking to hire our level of company. And we're killing that. We're killing it with that. Most of my guys around the country are booked out three to six weeks with one $1,500 job after the next, after the next, after the next, doing these McMansions. And so your program teaches people how to go after that particular market. Yeah, yeah, we've got that in, in the book. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning of this talk, we're really working hard at doing the business in the box thing. Um, I'm having a hoot running around this country. I've got a guy in South Carolina that um, his name's Pat. The first time they ever picked me up at the airport, they picked me up in a appliance repair van that they had bought at an auction. Two bucket seats in the back, empty in the back, high in the front, empty in the back. They had their two kids' car seats zip tied or strapped to the back of the bucket seats. Our kids didn't even know what it looked like to go down and drop the road, you know, in the car. All they saw was a white inside of a van. They picked me up to the airport and was one of my first clients and Sheila's sitting in the back of the van on a five gallon bucket as I sit in there. She goes, Hi, he's in one. Sheila, y'all don't have any seats in your van? Like, no. They see we just spent our last five thousand dollars hiring you. Where do we go from here? And I'm like, no pressure, you know. And um, there right now they got two branches. They did about seven hundred thousand dollars last year, and by the end of this spring they'll be amateurizing a million dollars a year in software. And they took home personally in excess of a hundred thousand dollar a year paycheck last year. So that's what gets me excited. My personal goal is in the next three years to create fifty one million dollar companies. So if you guys want to be a part of that, you can do it through soft wash, and you can look at me and say, hey, see, I want to do barbecue. I want to put here a barbecue team. I want to have a barbecue restaurant. Dude, I'll, I'll help you with that, too. It doesn't matter to me what business you want to do. I'll help you do it. If you want to do it through soft wash, that's probably the one I've got the most laid out. But I just want to see people succeed. Any other questions? Cool? Ooh, yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to go out and thank you. I think we're going to go out and play with the machines and all. I loaded up water in mine, so if you guys want to turn on the switch and see how everything works, and play with the valves and all, you don't have to worry about the leash act close. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And y'all can get with Jenny if you guys want to purchase the certified applicator today at a $200 savings. Save you 200 bucks if you get it today. All right.
Yeah. So, uh, Larry was telling me that you have, y'all have dialed in the uh, final. <laughs> now all we have to do is we have to come up with a roto brush, huh? If you can, great. I will, man. I'll, I'll, you know me, I, I love inventing stuff. <laughs> you know what? Make it happen. Yeah. If you do, I get, I get 10 cents on the dollar. Okay. <laughs> No, I haven't read it. I just, I'll read it. And then we come back to 